Welcome back for part two of the topic workshop. In part one, we learn about the procedure of making animation using the provided materials. In part two, we're going to apply motions from Maximo, which is an online resources, and build a simple backdrop with patterns. The first step on my screen, we already opened a VML V2 avatar. And this time I'm going to create an animation based on a spot square. So I'll go to shoes and change her shoes from heels to sneaker. Next, go to file. I'll export the OBJ. Now I'm exporting the avatar as an OBJ. As you can see the settings, I have to select all the avatars, save it as single object, keep it unwind, and the scale will remain to be default. I'm going to save all the texture image in a zip file. And then click OK to export. As you can see, I already have the sports favorite in a zip file, the OBJ. Now we're ready to go to Maximo. So Maximo is an online platform from Adobe and they provide several free characters and animation to download. The first step, I will upload an avatar. As you can see that they provide FBX, OBJ, and also zip file. To upload, I'll simply drag my whole zip file to load the avatar. After loading the avatar, I will go to the page of OctoRigger and I'll go to the next step. And I need to place this mask according to this reference image because I'm using the symmetry, so only need to place for one side. And go to the next step. So why do we need to do the octal rigging? It's because the motions of the avatar is basically controlled by something like skeleton, which we call rig. And each system has their own method to rig the avatar. If we want to use the animation provided in Maximo, we have to rig the clone avatar again to make sure that the skeleton fits with those animation. After auto rigging, if your avatar's movement looks natural and human-like, we can go to the next step. Before applying with the animation, I'll download the avatar in the original pose first. Save the format as FBX in original pose. Next, I can apply with the animation. You can click on different options to review how your avatar look. I'm going to search for a jumping motion. At the right hand side, you can see there are several settings allowed us to adjust the movement. The first one is overdrive. Overdrive refers to the duration of your motion. With a lower value, the movement will be slower. The second one, character arm space, which is the most important settings. It refers to the space between the avatar arm and avatar body. We have to make sure that there are enough space that no body part should touch with each other, or else it may cause garment collision when you generate your animation in call. 
and then I'm ready to download. Make sure that the format stay as FBX. So all in total, there are two files that we should have saved. The first one is the Octorig avatar in the original post. And then the second one is the avatar applied with the jumping motion. Now we can go back to Clo. And I'll delete this existing avatar. And then import the avatar applied with motion. When I import this FBX, I have to ensure that the animation is also included. I can go to this animation mode and click this play button to preview the movement. So basically for this file, I'm going to use the motion. So go to File, Save As, Joint Motion. As you can see, it will be saved as a motion file in MTN format. After that, I can remove this avatar. The next step, I'll import the Spots Feifei avatar, which is the one in the original post. Keep the default setting. For the animation, I will let the avatar to wear a sportswear. So before I add this garment file inside to my workspace, I have to make sure my avatar is located in center. And go to the material folder and find this spot square. Add it to workspace. And then add the backdrop. For backdrop, basically everything that you see is displayed in the 2D pattern window. The backdrop are created by patterns and I have some extra small pieces which is the freeze pattern to help holding the shape of my backdrop. In these images, I applied it as a graphic. Let's use the floor as an example. Find this white wood floor JPEG file, right click and add it as graphic. If you want to adjust the size of this graphic, you have to use the Transform Graphic 2. Select the graphic and then drag to rescale. 
So don't release your mouse and right click at the same time to find this transform window. I'll enlarge it to 900 percentage. And then I'll make a repeat by right click, tile, pattern. So this graphite will lay over all of the pattern. If you have some props which is created by AutoCAD, if they are in OBG or FBX file, it's also compatible. Let's say this thumbbell. I'll load it as avatar and the load type, make sure it's add. So switch back to the select move tool in order to touch or move your avatar. I'll arrange the position by the help of Gizmo tool. You can change to different view angle. For this OBJ, it's also possible to adjust the material type and also color. And basically we're ready to apply with the motion. Before that, as we mentioned in part one, we have to check the garment setting. So the particle distance of our garment should be within the range of 8 to 10 and all layers should set to 0. And the collision thickness set it as 2.5. And then for our avatar, skin up set 3 and the static friction set to 1. And I'll also check for the backdrop. As you can see, some part of the yoga mat is touching with the avatar. To prevent garment collision, I'll move all the backdrops a little downward. and freeze the floor and also the yoga mat. And then I can apply with the motion file. As I saved the motion file in the original material folder, and it is in MTN file format. Double click to apply. And you have to select the avatar because we have two, the dumbbell and also the sports baby. Choose sports baby. Switch to animation mode. In your animation editor, now we only have the transition motion and also the jumping motion. So I'll click this record button to also generate the motion of your garment. And you can take a look of the remaining time to estimate how long you still need to wait. When we finish the recording, 
You can see we also have the garment movement. And I'll adjust the play region, this blue bar, to exclude the transition motion. And basically, we're ready to generate our export setting. But before that, I'll switch back to the simulation mode and unfreeze the floor and the yoga mat. Basically, there are two ways to export an animation video. The first way is video capture. If you want to use the video capture function, you have to use the animation mode. You can find the video capture from file, video capture, animation. For this method, basically it captures everything we see in our 3D window. So we have to make sure that this kind of baseline and internal lines is invisible. So go to your 3D garment display and hide your internal lines and also baseline. And I will change to fake texture surface in order to see the thickness of the garment. And even the ground, we have some 3D grid. We need to hide it as well. Hide the 3D grid. And then I can start to do the video capture. The video size can be adjusted by preset. And different orientation. For video coding, make sure that you're using the XFIT MPEG-4. The file format could be open in most devices, so it's more preferable. And then I can start to record. This recording time refers to the actual time of your video. When the button turns to red, I can stop recording. Play to preview your video. It will be saved in AVI video format. So you can see this is how it looks if you use the video capture to generate your video. For this method, it's the fastest way to export video. However, the quality is relatively less high if you compare it with the render exportation. Now we're going to try the second method, which is rendering. To render a video, you can find Render and open your Render window. The first step is to start interactive rendering.
same as what we can adjust for a render image. If you use the rendering method to generate your video, you'll be able to adjust the light settings as well, which the video capture is able to do. And let's say I'm happy with the light settings already. I'd like to go to the image video properties. and set to generate an animation. Remember to click the box of save video or else you will be saving a bunch of render image only. And the image size will be the size of your animation. Scroll down and find the video codec. We have to use the XBIT MPEG form. And when you're satisfied, we can stop render and do the final rendering. So image and also video will be saved. And you can fulfill comparing with the video capture you can see that clearly if you do the rendering the quality is quite high however it's more time consuming so it really depends on your need and the quality desired and that's it for the public workshop and hope you enjoy, have a good time, and apply these tricks on your own animation in code. Thank you!